What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to do striped rows for our tree view with Kinter and Python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at striped rows for our tree view. But before we get started, if you like this video, wanna see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube one, get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books. One time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, in the last couple of videos, we've been looking at tree view. In the last video, I showed you how to change the color. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to do this cool striped effect. And it's fairly simple, but there's a couple little twists in there that uh, are make it a little bit interesting. So if we head back over to our code, I'm working in tree.py. And if you haven't seen the last couple of videos, check the link in the comment section below to see those. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. So we've got our tree.py file. And this is what we did in the last video. We changed the color by adding this style. We set it to default. And then we set our colors like this. Now, in order to sort of change individual columns, we need to use tags. And we've used tags before in the past when we worked with our text box, you know, when we did our text editor, the Kinter text widget, uh, you know, we use tags for that. So we're kind of familiar with tags already. And we're gonna basically use them in the same way here. So let's head down to where we actually put the data in the tree view. So this is, this is our code for this. We're inserting it here. We're just looping through here and adding these records that are in this list as we did a few videos ago. And uh, every time we do that, we create a count and then we increment the count. So we're actually gonna use that count for the striped row thing because we need to keep track of odd and even rows to change them into different colors. So let's come up here and uh, create striped row tags. And so let's call my underscore tree, this is the name of our tree. And we just wanna tag underscore configure. And we've done this in, in past videos. If you didn't catch those, you can check those out. And let's just name this. And I'm gonna name this odd row, or you can just name it odd, whatever you want. So odd row. And then what do we wanna do? Well, we just wanna change the background color. So background equals, and let's just make this white, right? So I can copy this and do it again. Instead of odd row here, let's go even row. And instead of white, let's call this, I don't know, light blue. Now you can use your color hex codes for this or just uh, words like light blue and white, so whatever you prefer. So we've got our tags now. Now all we need to do is add them in this insert statement right here, but we need to do it a little bit differently than that. So first off, let's just, let me just show you how to use a tag in this insert statement. We just come to the end here and we can just go tags equal and then this is a tuple. And then let's just say even row. And tuples, even with one thing in them, need a comma to separate the things, the items in the tuple. Like I said, even though there's only one item in, we still need to put a comma there. So uh, even row, and that's just right here. So this will make everything in here light blue. So let's just save this and run it just to see. So let's go python tree.py. And when we do, we see all of the, the rows in here are blue, right? So if we head back over here, I'm gonna add a few more records just to, to make this a little bit bigger. Put a comma here and just paste in some more records. No big deal there. So, okay, now what do we do if we want to switch between rows? So we want odd and even rows different. Well, we've got this count, so we can just do a little Python, a little math, to sort of determine whether it's an odd row or an even row. So to do that, I like to use something called a modulus. If you're not familiar with a modulus, it's a math operator in Python. This is not a Kinter thing, this is just pure Python. So a modulus will return the remainder. So let's say you have 10 and you divide it by two. Two goes into 10 five times with no remainder, nothing left over. If you take 10 divided by three, three goes into 10 three times, three times three is nine, 10 minus nine is one, you have a remainder one. So the modulus returns that remainder. So we can do a little math and say, hey, if the remainder is zero, that means it's an even number. If it's one, that means it's an odd number. And we can just do it like that. So let's do that. So here we've got our count and here we have our if statement. And this is where we're inserting the data. So inside of here, so above here, 
we can just do an if statement. So let's say if count modulus two equals double equal to sign zero. So that's that means if if we divide whatever the count number is by two and the remainder is zero, that means it's an even row, right? So here we can just insert our even row. So let me just copy this. Or then we can say else, if it's not zero, that mean, that must mean it's something else. If it's something else, that means it's an odd row, an odd number. So we can just paste in odd row. And that's really all there is to it. Make sure then outside of this if statement, we increment our counter so that the next time it loops through there, it'll add one to it. So let's go ahead and save this and run it, see if that worked. And sure enough, it did. And we can see the last row here is uh, gray. You might wanna change your background color to something else. We can come back here and do that real quick. If we come up here to where we changed our background color, we might change the field background to white and maybe this background to white too, if this is what you wanted to do. If we save this and run it, it's just gonna look slightly nicer. And there we go. So one thing to note, if we get rid of all of this style stuff, like here, if we get rid of it here and get rid of it here. So if I comment out all of the previous style, even though we're changing the color down here, right? you still need this stuff up here, right? Even if it's completely different color. So if we save this and leave it off, none of the stripe stuff works. So keep that in mind, that's really kind of interesting. So let's come back here and add this stuff back. Now, one more interesting thing to see, if we come over here and let's add another record, let's just say uh, Bobby, Bobby is number 10. There we go, Bobby likes cheese. If we add this record, well, it's white, but okay, let's go back here real quick and change our background again to, uh, what was it before, D3, D3, D3. So this will be the background and the field background. Okay, so now if we run this again, and let's add Bobby. Bobby's number 10, he likes cheese. If we add this guy, notice it's added it as gray. Why is that? Well, because the code to add a record is a different function. So if we come through here and let's let's look and find it here. Uh, da, 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 da. Remove many, remove all, add record. You can see right here, we're doing this, right? But we're not, doing any tags in this insert statement. So if we want this to work, we have to come up here and we can just sort of copy this, copy this if statement. So let's see right here. There we go. And we wanna copy the tag statement also. So let's see. That's gonna be right here. So we can add this to the end of this, which we wanna make sure we put it in the right spot. So right here it looks like. So let's copy this whole thing and do an else statement here as well. And then change this one to odd row. But also, since we're in a function here, we probably should copy our tag configuration stuff as well, just to make sure that it, it passes through into this function. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this and run it, see if that worked. Uh-oh, ah, all right, typo, typo. Ah, double, <laughs> there we go. Okay, let's go ahead and save this and run it. Now, if we add Bobby, Bobby is number 10, he likes cheese. If we add this, boom, it becomes white. So any place where you're adding records, you need to sort of use that same if logic in order for this to work, but uh, fairly simple and pretty cool. So that's all there is to stripes. Uh, you know, a little bit tricky with the modulus thing. If you're not familiar with the modulus, man, I use it all the time for all kinds of stuff. It's a really handy thing to understand. 
uh, bringing back remainders of numbers and doing cool things with it. And uh, that's really all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So they pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 45 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.